Hi, facial cosmetology is an option a lot of young dentists think about after they complete their BDS. So in today's video, we are going to talk about it. That is, what is cosmetology? What does a cosmetologist do? What is facial cosmetology? What is the difference between it and aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry? What are the procedures which come under it? And dentists do which of these procedures? Towards the end, we'll also give you a list of the institutes where you can do these courses from. If you're interested, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. So what is cosmetology? Cosmetology is the study and application of procedures which help enhance the beauty. It could be anything from normal skincare routines, hairstyling to even manicure and pedicure. Cosmetologist is one who is trained in these procedures and uses them. So what is facial cosmetology? Facial cosmetology deals with enhancing the beauty of the face. So what is the difference between aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry and facial cosmetology? Aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry has started say around three to four decades ago and it focused mainly on the teeth and the gingiva, that is the intraoral cavity. Whereas the facial cosmetology focuses on the face. It could be anything from your cheeks to your chin, your nose and even your hair. Next is, what are the different procedures usually done in facial cosmetology? It's a vast topic. It includes various things like facials, chemical peeling, microderma abrasion, micro needling. It also includes things like dermal fillers, PRP therapy, Botulinum toxin injections, that is Botox for short. There are also procedures like thread lifts, rhinoplasty, that is surgeries of the nose, hair transplantation, which comes under trichology, chin surgeries like genioplasty, or even advanced jaw surgeries like BSSO. Then the question asked is, which of these procedures are usually done by dentists? Now the basic procedures like facials and chemical peeling, can be done by anyone. You do not require any medical background for it. They are also done by beauticians and cosmetologists. Whereas when you come to further advanced procedures like PRP therapy or Botox, you need increased clinical skills. These are regularly done by a lot of dentists once they are trained well in doing these procedures. Then there are certain procedures which require slightly advanced skills. That could be thread lifts. Since these are new procedures, our medical legal system is not quite sure where it falls under, whether dentists are supposed to do it or are not allowed to. So before you do these procedures, I would suggest whenever you do a course, see that they have a medical legal part attached to it, where you get clarity about this. Another thing you need to keep in mind is, whenever you are doing a facial cosmetology procedure, you have to have informed consent. That is, all your patients need to be told about the advantages, disadvantages and complications of the procedure. You do not want to be doing these procedures and later on landing in a soup. Then there are the extremely advanced procedures like rhinoplasty, genioplasty or BSSO. These procedures are better left to the specialists like the oral and maxillofacial surgeons or the plastic surgeons. The next is you have made up your mind you want to do facial cosmetology. But how do you go about doing it? There are two systems I've seen general dentists adopt. Some of them create a niche or a boutique like clinic where they focus mainly on facial cosmetology. They may do a few scalings, a few composite restorations. But when patients come in for other general dentistry treatment, they call in consultants with their sole focus on facial cosmetology. Then comes the other set of practitioners. They use facial cosmetology as an adjunct and not their primary focus. That is, they do their general dentistry. It can be root canals, extraction, full mouth rehabilitations. Whenever they get a patient 
who they think could be upsold or requires facial cosmetology, that is when they try and convince the patient. For example, a patient with an edentulous mouth walks into the clinic and then they give him a complete new set of teeth using implants. Later they realize that maybe an adjunct procedure of maybe Botox or thread lifts would help improve the smile of the patient. The other example could be a lady walks in, she's going to get married pretty soon. She's come in for cleaning and for tooth whitening. That is when they try and convince the patient to go in for a lip filler. So such practices use facial cosmetology as an adjunct to their entire treatment planning. But one thing I've noticed that many of these facial cosmetologists do not do consultations. That is, they do not go to other clinics and do these procedures. This is one area where facial cosmetology is lacking. Why so? I'm not sure. So if you're keen on doing facial cosmetology, you can try it out. Like how orthodontists, endodontists or oral surgeons go to various clinics and do procedures. Maybe facial cosmetologists could do the same. Before we go in to telling you where the list of institutes are, I would like to ask you, even if you got one point out of this video, do not forget to hit the like button below. And I'm sure you're already subscribed to our channel because we keep on coming up with content which will help you grow in dentistry after your BDS. The list of a few institutes where these courses are taught, maybe as diplomas, fellowship or a one year or three day course is given in our description below. Do not forget to check it out. Other than that, we have also made a video about how to become an aesthetic and cosmetic dentist after BDS. I hope you have checked it out. If not, do check out the video. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed.